Let's bring in Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, former National Security Advisor to President Pence, Vice President Pence, and the co-chairman at the Center for American Security. He's also a Fox News contributor. Uh, we had hoped to be at the touch screen right, today, John. but uh, it's on strike. So yeah. <laughs> we'll try to get it fixed for next time. But this is a big problem that mm -hmm. Ukraine is a big source of Africa, the Middle East, yeah. um, foodstuffs in terms of grains. It's all stuck there in Ukraine was, as we look at the fighting. And there's a, a narrow little area down there in the Odessa area right. to get it out by ship, which is the most efficient way to move grain. Uh, you can't really get it out of uh, that port right now because the Russian fleet is further down in the Black Sea blocking it. There's been talk about getting it out by rail to the west or, or maybe even have U.N. flagged vessels, uh, vessels protect cargo ships as they come out of Odessa. What's the best way to do this? Well, you know, John, 90 percent of the grain that's come out of Ukraine traditionally has come out by water, by, by the sea. It comes out through the Sea of Azov because of Mariupol's gone. You can't do that. And the only other place you can come out of really is Odessa. Right now in Odessa, in the harbor, there's about 80 ships that are just stuck there. And they're stuck there for, for various reasons. One, both the Ukrainians and the Russians have mined that area mm -hmm. so that they've got to clear that if they want to get them out. The second is you've got a, a blockade by the Russians, and the only, you have to figure a way to break through that blockade. And, and I believe the only way you can do that is to get the U.N. to kind of force that into action and have unflagged ships do it and escort the grain ships out for humanitarian reasons. And then the third problem is you've got the, the Straits of Bosporus and the Dardanelles that is actually controlled because through the Treaty of Montreux mm -hmm. by Erdogan in Turkey, and he can allow what... Uh, ships he wants to come in there, you know, uh, warships to come in and out by certain tonnage in certain countries, so he can stop it all. So this is a very complicated issue if they want to get it out of there. The problem with, with when you look at Ukraine and Russia, that's about one-third of the grain that comes out in the world. Forty-one of the most undeveloped countries rely on Ukrainian grain to feed themselves. It, you know, we don't really realize that in the United States because... We export grain, but so, it, it's an impact in the world. So we'll see if they can work. Listen, I want to jump to the last map in, this, in the series that we had here planned, which is uh, China and Japan, mm -hmm. the Sea of Japan, as well as the East China Sea and the Philippine Sea. Because as President Biden was meeting with the so-called Quad, which is the United States, Japan, India, and Australia, uh, the joint Russian-Chinese military exercise, flew a bunch of nuclear-capable bombers down the Sea of Japan, through the East China Sea, and then out in the Philippine Sea, as this was going on. Now, apparently, they told Japan and South Korea they were going to, going to do it. But that really is a kind of an in-your-face move. Yeah, it was. You know, when you, there were six, air, six aircraft that did it. I think it was really a shot at Japan, because the Chinese are very concerned about Japan, especially real mil, re, remilitarization. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the shot, not so much at the U.S., but the Japanese. All right. General, I was great to see you. We'll get you back when the uh, touchscreen's done on strike. Yeah.